In case you don't remember, this is what you do. Get up out of bed now. If there's nothing left to find an answer to, here is question number one. Who's afraid to 
Hoosa Hey Die Hoosa Made of men Hoosa Afraid of fear Hoosa Afraid of falling Hoosa Afraid of looking stupid to agree to a space where women and men are finding answers in equality, to revolutionize education and agriculture, to open laboratories, share resources, create our own exchange currency, to abolish the virus of competition and inequality, to share our information and experience for the benefit of the wholehearted community, to imagine and propose new solutions to be tested and practiced with bold optimism and thoughtful prudence. And with confidence and intuition, everywhere will spread these small, courageous examples built on creative risk. We will learn to experience our own hidden genius humbly, joyfully, and without arrogance. Let the era be our university, not our penitentiary. Oh, mother, 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 save me from the false teacher. Save me from the teacher with long tongue. From the teacher with too much power From the teacher with too much charisma Who has no love Oh friend, sometimes it takes a bad teacher to make a wise student Oh mother, mother, save me 
me from the teacher channel Who is guided by nobody Who listens to inner voices But not to human beings Save me from the teacher channel From the teacher who tells me they are enlightened Save me from the enlightened teacher Save me from the teacher who tells me they are enlightened When I say I love you, 
You find ways to leave me Believe me if that's what you want That's what you must do And what's going to happen is like the most awful screw-ups, you know, completely and utterly respectabilized, you know. People, it'll be respectable for people to really beat the shit out of each other and, and smash up their latest toys and so on, you know. And you see that this whole fascist movement happening in England. England's a very worrying place. What's going down there? He's a sensitive guy. He got his back on his back. Playing tickets in his pocket. Don't know when he'd be back. He traveled by standby. the seed idea for a band as a spiritual vehicle came from meditations in 1966 and later on it's in 1973 playing with gong in the milkweg club in amsterdam and i saw a new clear mystery temple where art was equal to god god was equal to art now this spirit temple where art is the channel to and for spirit had seven levels and for zero our hero to rise up out of himself into a wider understanding of life he had to pass seven initiations represented by the seven notes c d e f g a 
and B. And the seven colours of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Now, this is the seed teaching, the rainbow at the heart of Gong, realised in the seven drones performed by ten glissando guitar musicians at the Ancon in Amsterdam at the Milky Way, where I had the vision, in 2006. <laughs> what a fantastic circle to complete. I also like to do it, music with no technology and I live in the country where I can hear the ocean and the birds and then I don't play any music, I just listen to birds and ocean and noises from nature. So I have both sides uh, and I think probably there's an equilibrium to be struck and so I have a balance between the two. That's right, neither one nor the other, balance. Feed me that Kentucky Fried Chicken stuff, and then the South African security guards can mess with whatever's still kicking. Up here is me. How about that bit of the old Marquis de Sade? Allah, Abu Ghraib. Confidence has been shaken. Brother. Taste more exotic, you know? That'll teach you not. Teach me, eh? That'll teach me. That'll teach me not to be an obedient, white slave, robotic. Accuse me. Why don't you? Go on. Bloody well accuse me. Go on. It might mean I've done something wrong. And right now that confidence has been shaken. Oh. Done something wrong. Hey, Mr. Atoli Generica. Hey. And right now that confidence has been shaken. Confuse me. 
And right now that confidence has been shaken, been shaken, been shaken, been shaken. You know, I just confessed to shaken. anything you want, mate. It'll be great days. Are you happy now, General Ruddick? Hey, no worries. And then, destroy me. Yeah. Well, that's easy because I'm half gone already. And then you have to evaporate me. But in all these days, it's a breeze from Sunny Bread Chickens. <sighs> and then, forget me. No worries about that, eh? Oh, baby, oh, my dog, gong. Rungra, but this could be the end of my long life song. Police state Australia, yeah, fuck, kill them. The truth sings the blues. Cops in their copters, gotta wonder about you too. Uh oh. Well, I don't think. We ever was a true blue Aussie myself. What about you? What about you? Oh, well, that's word flow. Tell you. We'll come with the star men arriving Two of three, two They'll be looking at you They're coming down to earth And it's been so long So very, very long ago When they last dared To come down here To show us what we need to know How to survive without killing the plan.
testicle, my friends, is very mystical. believe in facts. I think facts are the idlest of the superstitions. Richard Burton, the traveler, once said that. Facts are the idlest of superstitions. What are facts? You know, they're somebody's fantasies. And so I get up there and I rave on about my fantasy of what happened. And everyone said, that's the truth. It's not the truth. I mean, the truth is what whatever anybody wants to make of it, whatever they feel they need to make of it. Any, any kind of history, I mean, history itself is a complete uh, misnomer as far as I'm saying it. Just, History doesn't exist. History is one man's fantasy. That's all you can say, based on certain kind of uh, coded uh, information. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know that each of us will perceive that house in a different way and describe it in a different way. And each of us singly on different occasions during the day will also describe that house in a different way. So how many different ways they describe that house? The endless ways of describing that house. So the whole of history, the whole of written history, is a complete load of, uh, load of uh, phantasmagoria, isn't it? So therefore, my vision of um, Planet Gong and um, the whole thing is completely open to question. Uh, it's, it's my particular personal fantasy. It's what I probably what I wanted to make of it more than what I did make of it. Between things we just want and the things that we need and nothing. Well, you know that you knew it all the time. But when the new world comes, dear, where will you? Irish style, so I was always hearing Gershwin and uh, 
all of those great musical songs from the 30s and they'd, they'd drink lots of very tall bottles of beer and, and get really pissed and just sing and sing and sing my father could play anything on the piano so that was it sort of like Irish stuff wasn't it there was no TV there was radio was very limited it was the war wasn't it people were killing themselves in Europe and what were we doing getting pissed and playing around the piano and singing that's what happens in Australia <laughs> It was more about spiritual guidance through music and how to survive the how to survive the coming imbalance problems, how to get in tune with each other and how to be in tune from here to there and back again and between each other. And how to channel spirit through everything you do. Anyway, in the time of the gong we were using a lot of these terms like pothead pixie and uh plan a flying teapot and things as code words, and they were kind of a silly language in a way. But, for example, the masters of the music behind, behind the music that we were doing, the guides, the spirit guides that were guiding our act activities and advising us from the astral plane, we called these intelligences the octave doctors, and in particular, there was one who showed up more often than not, still does, who we call the Switch Doctor. Now, the weird thing is about this channeling spirit through music is that you can be a channel for spirit through music without knowing it and without particularly appreciating the necessity for spirit even coming through music. A lot of people, when they first start out, will make kind of music which does use, does channel spirit through it, but they, they don't realize it, and, but it still has the effect of uplifting people, right, and raising people's vibrations. Politics talks and talks, and then finally when politics makes an action, it kills and destroys and hates. And yet music fulfills and enjoys and creates. Politicians and the revolutionaries, they want to kick down indulgent daddy and smash their latest toys. And they want to destroy ancient wisdom and be wise without delay. But music is a different rhythm of life. Gong is a whole world. Gong is the revolution which does not talk. While politics talk of changing world systems, Gong's already changed, you know? Gong lives it. Gong works to change themselves, and Gong's already outside in temporary values. Soon Gong will be everybody. Gong seeks perfect harmony, experiences dissonance together. Gong live together, apart. They're hermits who live in groups, finding answers in the other versions of themselves with whom they live and play.
making you friends. <laughs> Facebook. Are you my friend? Can I trust you with my secrets? Or are my secrets now an endangered species? Fast book, you monophobe, you octopus brothel, you porcupine barbecue of the vanities. <laughs> okay, so why am I not famous? Facebook. And if I am famous, does this mean God loves me? Facebook. And if I am not a celebrity, if I am not a celebrity, do I actually exist? Facebook. If I am a celebrity, when will I know I'm loved? And detestable. And that I exist. So when I die, I'll be embalmed in your silver fossil book cloud. Fussburk. Are you spy on me, fuckbook? <laughs> no, I am not a terrorist. I'm an errorist. Foot in mouth book. Ah, ha, ha. Foot in mouth book. Ah, ha, ha. Foot in mouth book. Ah, ha, ha. Don't you realise I am smarter than you, waffle book? Hey, falafel book. I'm going to make a load of money out of you and then I'm going to be a thought in the hedge fund of your temporal fuckundity. Fart book. <laughs> hey, come on. Fart book. Your psycho think tank Ponzi scheme already rules the world by whispers, scandal, espionage and porn. Thank you, filth book. <laughs> My body is aging. My face is aging. My teeth are aging. My neck is aging. My elbows are aging. My hands are aging. My feet are aging. My knees are aging. My thighs are aging. My bum is aging. My ass is aging. My penis is a aging. My penis? Penis is aging? Hello? Yes, your penis is aging. Well, it always has been very old, old as gold, Diana. Do you play the piano, Diana? But I, I don't want to look old. I feel so young, so full of spring. Can't you see my wings? Oh, oh, you can't, huh? I know. All you can see is my head is spinning away, and my hair is thinning, and... And grey. All you want to see is that my skin is wrinkling and shrinkling, muscle tone stinkling, my eye sockets crinkling. At your age, you dag. Take your shades off and let's look at the bags. I know you mock me. You make me. I'm not paranoid. You make me so, so conscious of, of sags and droops and paunches. You give me nerves like cut lunches. My bride's drunk with, with punches at youth culture functions. If puberty is a hair-raising experience, then menopause, of course, is a face-lifting experience to the factual smack of lip service face values. If only I'd known when I was 20 that I'd still be the same when I was 50. Instead of trying to die before I got too old, I'd cry. 
I ain't gonna get old till after I die. Now you're here, now you're gone, and now not where you belong. Be the wizard of the keys, and he'll reveal the mysteries of angels and the uppercoaters. Bring your well-written love projectors, now you point up in the sky, you can see the teapots fly. Sex and drugs and rock and roll just ain't enough for you. I mean, what do you do, you know? Uh, and also, you know, we're living in this country of consumerism, you know, and, and drugs are another form of consumerism. They've become the, uh, the imperative of the bourgeoisie. People used to think that drugs were really uh, like far out and kind of revolutionary and stuff. They're not. They're just another kind of bourgeois imperative that you buy in head shops, all the paraphernalia in head shops. It's become a consumer item. And if one really is going to take open for the people to heart, and if one is really going to try and change the world, then one has to see that one has to strip away everything that one's depending on. And what's so curious is that people are into health food, for example, and they're into alternative society and culture in so many ways are still utterly dependent on them, like this really heavily dependent on this one outrageous consumer item, which is, it's outrageous because the profits that are being made on it and all the stuff that goes with it, the kind of uh, atmosphere that, that hangs around it and so on, none of it is at all furthering finally, you know, if one is really trying to go into a new world. It's something that uh, one has to buy and one has to hustle and one has to score and one has to have paranoia about because it's vaguely illegal. And also there's the other element that because it's vaguely illegal it becomes more uh, sort of colourful or more kind of... Uh, uh, it's more of an adventure, you know, exciting or something like that. But less so now because who's going to bust you for dope now? I mean, there's not too many people. I mean, everyone smokes outrageously. You know. Well, I used to find that when I first started smoking dope, it was about 1960, it was, it was kind of outrageous and nobody much knew about it and it was a real exciting thing to do, it was like a big adventure. Um, but now I, I really see, well, yeah, okay, smoke dope, but let's not you know, give it any outrageous claims. It used to be uh, capable of expanding consciousness and giving people kind of spiritual direction. but It's like counterfeit money, you know, I mean, it looks the same. The experience seems the same, but it's really super misleading and it takes you right along the wrong path. And people who get hooked into dope after the first experience with dope can just, you know, endlessly go up their own, uh, their own uh, <laughs> spiraling up their own, uh, how can I put that without uh, having you shut down, <laughs> uh, spiraling up their own, uh, basic cavity, shall we say, <laughs> because it's not, what is it, you know, it's like, uh, it's a big hallucination. See, what I'm really interested in is, is spirit, and there's a lot of other people that are interested in spirit, okay, the people that are interested in spirit and are doing dope, they're not interested in spirit, they're interested in what dope gives. And this is the problem, you know, and all that time that I was in spirit and I was doing dope, I can now see super clearly that what I was seeing was what dope, was dope hallucinations. I was not seeing spirit. There's only one way to do spirit and just nothing can help you do spirit. So nothing can help you get to spirit. Anything you use to help you get to spirit will distort spirit. 
And dope is one of the biggest things to distort spirit. It really is because it's so close. It gives you the impression that you're there and you're so far away, just so far away. And so I just say with a heavy heart, you know, to all those people that that are on the path of dope spirit, man, it's sad because it, you know, you have to strip everything away. You have to not be a consumer. You have to just start with nothing and be in a desert with no clothes, no food, no water, and above all, no dope, and get there all by yourself with no crutches, no first aids, no nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, if you're just going to use dope to um, amuse yourself or <coughs> to make life seem more spectacular, and more colorful, more dramatic, and stuff, okay, it's exactly the same as gin and tonic, you know, except it does more damage to your subtle bodies. Does more. Is that? It does more damage. Yeah, there? it does more damage. Well, it's been proven by people who do psychic research and and even by certain enlightened doctors that alcohol being a much more um, unsubtle and obvious kind of a drug, um, before it does you that much harm, makes you sick, physically sick. So you're there, you've got these warning devices built in. I mean, there you are throwing up in the garden or something before it actually starts to attack you psychically. But um, particularly hash or coke and all these things, they, even acid, they don't make you sick, they, but they can make cause your aura and all your subtle bodies, your etheric bodies and so on, to be feeding back and blowing out and collapsing and expanding and doing all these alarming things. And there's, not, there's no real sort of physical, um, noticeable physical aftermath, you know. So that there are people doing this and they don't have anything to stop them. There's nothing. They're not in the garden throwing out. There's nothing to revolt them and make them realize what they're doing. So therefore, you know, you can go much further with these things, but they can also blow out you, you know, the things you've been given to protect you. And so therefore you get these people who believe they're God, you people who uh, believe all kinds of weird things and they're just screwed up and they're in a, in a complete dream world, hallucinating that they're, what they're not and so on. And you can see it's like a form of possession. It's like they don't have any protection left against the elements around them. They're on a on a kind of a low level half the time, and on a high level the other half the time. And everyone would like to believe they're on a high level all the time, but they say things which are so alarming that it couldn't possibly be coming from a higher place. It it's tremendously confusing once you get into the realm of dr drugs and um, mind expansion. It gets very confusing and very dangerously confusing because it's so hard to tell you know, where, what's coming from where anymore, you don't have control, and in the end, I'm a control freak, you know, I gave up dough because I just, I couldn't stand this feeling of not knowing, you know, what was happening to me, I would be behaving in weird ways, and I couldn't really understand it, why, why I was behaving like that, why the things I was saying, why I was saying them, you know, I wasn't in control, I was somewhere out there, you know, and I, I just think this was a good thing, I just think this is like automatic writing, or like being a shaman, or something like this, you know, that there was something uh, in psychic history which justified uh, doing this kind of thing. But uh, when it came down to reality, if I could actually put my feet on the ground and look what I'd been doing, there was nothing to be proud of and there was nothing particularly good. I'd get stoned and I'd entertain myself and I'd have a great time and I'd think I was being wise and I'd think I was being perceptive. But if I had a tape recording of myself or a video of myself doing this and I looked at that straight, I was just making an ass of myself. I was entertaining myself. It's the, it's the height of selfishness, though, because what do you do? You get stoned, and everything you seem to be saying and doing seems to be to you, to who else? To everybody else who's stoned, maybe. But if anybody's not stoned, if anybody's just that naked person with no food and nothing in the desert, which is like a, trying to say this is kind of reality of the human race as it's born, looking on, that will look just completely crazy. It will look like distorted consciousness. Maybe you're into the puzzle Maybe you're blowing the bubble Maybe you're rolling the puddle The more you know, the more you know, you don't know what you know
is move oh. capitalism, uh, move away from capitalism and move into a new political system, which I've always called floating anarchy. And everyone of goes, course, ho, yeah. ho, ho, floating anarchy. But if you go back to pre-Franco in Spain, they almost achieved it. And that is complete decentralization so that you've got lots of small units. No human being is capable of being a leader of the world or a leader of a country. They're too f frail. We're too fragile. We can't do it. We can't.
He's this mystic, Mr. Mysterious I hope for a huge construction site of optimism, a miracle of beauty and fine art, a colossal temple of hope, pharaohic, heroic, Himalayesque, pre-diluvium, superhuman, because that means simply 100% pure, organic human. Money doesn't make it, money don't go round, money makes the world go down, down, down. Money through the roof, money hit the ground Money make the world go upside down Money make you happy, money make you cry Why does money make everybody lie? Nothing is for nothing in the wild of the free Money doesn't matter, doesn't matter to me Burn your money, free that child Don't teach children to work a cook Burn your money, free that child Don't teach children to work a crooked mind Because it was pretty obvious that the, the, the boys on Planet Gong that I really wanted to take off and do something else, so they sent Stevie. How well do you think he'll fit in with the band so in his new role as leader now that you've gone? Oh, he's not the leader. See, I mean, that's the whole thing. There, there ain't no leaders and you go. He just happens to be, I was a guitarist and I also wrote songs, and he happens to be a guitarist and he also writes songs. The only one rule with Gong, Gong go on forever, because the only one rule with Gong is that if you want to split, you have to find a replacement. If you don't do that, you, you're running some pretty heavy weather. When the rich man makes his fortune, pops the best champagne. When the sick man cures his illness, conquerors of pain, these are the high points of our lives. Oh, the warrior, it's the danger, edge of life and death. Schoolboy, imitate TV ranger, watch him hold his breath. These are the high points of our lives. Fashion model, fame and beauty, flashing the beat of bear. There's nobody can sustain it, cash and perfect hands. These are the high points of our lives. For the seeker, it's the melting in somebody's flame. For the baby, it's the mother calling out their name. High points of our lives. Reflection, look at for yourself again. High points of our life. When the show is over, and everybody's gone, the sole remaining waiter slyly dons his early morning madness. And begins to scream. I'm 
singing a song about a lonely guy walking alone in the rain. He looks at the faces as they hurry by, but they're all the same. His friends in his hometown are far away. His lovers are lost in a dream. He turns and he walks into a pile of game. He puts his hands out to touch what he wants oh so much, but it's all double touch. Oh, what should he do now? Could this be you? So teach me about. Emotion, ooh, life and my devotion, ooh, and God knows I've tried to work side by side. I keep my feelings inside of me. Oh, my poor brothers, my friends. Women just ain't who they used to be. Relationships come to an end without dignity. Oh, what it was to be a man, so proud, so respected, so strong. So tell me, where did we go wrong? Where the women give birth and inherit the earth, where a man has no worth. The game is over. No pleasing her. You know the pleasers are the losers. The abused become the abusers. Ooh, maybe I'm full, mute as a mule, keeping my cool. Nobody told me nothing about that. My mama, she done told me. Sit out there and eat your tea, boy. My mama, she done told me. Take off your dirty socks and leave them to me, boy. My mama, she done told me. You better get yourself a gal to care for you. But my girl, talking about my girl. She reckons she ain't my gal. Boy, has she got anger! Anger because I got expectations. Anger because I want sexual relations. Anger because she said I don't own her. Angry because I don't own my own boner. Wait a minute, Mama. You just led me up the garden path, right up into the doghouse, Mama. So fuck you, Mama. Poor guys. Poor boys. The women.
women just ain't who they used to be. No woman, no cry. But hey, man, come on now. Don't be put down. Get up again, mama. Get up again, man. Come on. I don't want to see you outside. I want to see you inside out with your dads hanging out. With your hang ups held high. Hey, man, let's hang together and let go again and again and again and again and again. It's a question of spiritual tightness more than actual sort of physical plane tightness. It's just a question of like being able to bring. The only reason why I even bothered to play music is really just to raise consciousness. I couldn't give a shit about music, you know, fame and all that stuff. I try to avoid it if possible because I think the low pro profile is the easiest way to get that kind of energy up. And so, therefore, anything that concerns me about musicians that I'm playing with is whether or not they are into that, they're spiritually together enough to be able to support the vibration that comes down from this planet Gong, this mythological planet Gong. It's a very real energy, which can lift people's consciousness without the aid of any kind of chemical stimulant at all. It can replace dope completely as a, as a way of getting off music. It's an interesting interesting ah. side, side aspect of that is that Gong has always been considered the drug band of Europe, you know. Well, and it would be assumed, therefore, that the gong band itself and members in the gong band would be big-time druggies. Well, opium for the people was the turning point. I mean, that was where we suddenly started to come come over and make it clear. Because if you remember, in the last record of the trilogy, one of the lines was, you don't have to give up to it. Because at, at that point, it was still just relevant. But, I mean, everything has its time, you know, and dope had its time. When I, talk, when I say the word dope, I mean, I'm talking about acid and, and hash and grass, really. It had its time. It had its importance in its time. I think that basically, basically people that are still into dope now are just, uh, it's a nostalgic trip, and it's become a kind of social habit, and it's become it's replacing cocktails at five, you know, and it really has no meaning at all. The meaning it had for us, I think, was like a spiritual revelation. But the people... That now don't need it. I mean, they're, they're, they've had the revelation. They can have the revelation anyhow. But for the, the particular generation that needed dope, had to have their heads kicked open. Now, now the generations that are emerging now, the newer generations, don't have to have their heads kicked. They're already there. And what they do, they get hung up and down as new, and they kind of desensitize themselves because they're too fucking sensitive. In those days, people weren't sensitive enough, and they had to turn on the grass and have their heads open with acid to become sensitive. You know, so the time, as far as I'm concerned, the time of psychedelics and of dope in general is over, you know, and that's why now it's possible to, you look at dope as being everything in society, I mean, you know, television, politics, religion, church religion particularly. They're all forms of opium, all forms of opiate to put you to sleep, not to wake you up. And what we're trying to do is to make a kind of music that really wakes you up, which lightens you to such an extent you almost feel like you're going to float, like those very first experiences with dope, you know. This is not necessary. Yeah, it's, it's, become, it's become it's become the uh, epitome of the record business. Uh, especially, I guess, cocaine has become the epitome. Yeah, well, I mean, that's it. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it just fucks you up. I mean, wow. Yeah. Okay, but that's it. It's become the opiate. It's become something which is, it's not giving anybody high. It's not giving anybody in, in the way I mean high. And it's yes. actually bringing people down. It's a mental, spiritual, physical high that you're talking about, right? Do you feel that dope uh, desensitizes you, stifles your creativity? Eventually, because it's a shortcut number. It's like, okay, so with acid you could, you, could get, you could get to places you couldn't go to very easily without it, perhaps. But it's like catching a tourist bus to Majorca and zooming about all over Majorca and saying, wow, I'll be in Majorca. Or the Great Pyramid, and you go roaring past, you take, just have time to take a couple of photographs. You go, th go through those places so fast, you, you just don't remember it. That's the whole problem with dope. You can get there, but you won't remember it. And why is that? Because it's, it's a shortcut. You didn't pay your dues. Any kind of, kind of spiritual advancement, you have to pay your dues. And paying your dues is not a pleasurable thing. That's why the whole pleasure tendency is like a... And Gurdjieff, I don't know whether anybody particularly heard of Gurdjieff, this geezer, one of the wise men of the 30s, and he had this whole thing called intentional suffering 
In other words, he realized that um, the pleasure syndrome is not going to actually get you anywhere particularly. It was just going to stop you where you were. You don't really make any advance just through pure pleasure trips, right? But an intelligent person will realize that by conscious suffering, not unconscious suffering, and not sadomasochism, and not kind of like the whole, I will suffer for my art, and all this bullshit, but just a conscious kind of friction will actually evolve you quicker than anything else. And so he developed this theory based on that. And no, I, I believe absolutely in that. And the very act of touring with a band like Gong and not seeking like the plushy thick carpet tour type syndrome and going about in a, in a fucked up old school bus and doing everything the hard way is exactly that. It's intentional suffering because we don't have to do that, but we want to do that because we don't want to waste time. We want to evolve as soon as, as quickly as we can. And unfortunately, like evolving via the dope trip is not particularly furthering because it's a shortcut trip and whatever you gain, you lose almost straight away. You know, it's forcing pressure and then you just fall right back again because you haven't got the equipment to maintain your height because you haven't developed it, you know, and worked on those muscles to keep you up there, spiritual muscles.